Hi students, uh, we are today going to study the experiment to determine unknown resistance and to verify laws of resistance in series and parallel by using the apparatus called meter bridge. If you have a look at the circuit diagram here, in the circuit diagram you find that we have a wire AC, the left hand side point is named as point A, the right side point is named as point C. This wire is called meter bridge. You can see that in between A and C we have got a battery key and a rheostat connected. In the left gap we have got unknown resistance connected and in the right gap we have got a known resistance or a resistance box connected. Now we will have a look at the uh, experimental apparatus. In the experimental apparatus if you see you have a meter bridge. The meter bridge wire is wire AC. This left hand point is point A. One winter thin uniform long wire is stretched on a wooden board. This right hand side point we will call it as point C. We have a 2 volt battery source. Then to the right of that I have got my key. Then a rheostat. In the left hand gap I have to connect unknown resistances X1 and X2. Then to the right of that I have got a galvanometer and to the right of that you have got a resistance box as well. So I have arranged my apparatus as seen in the circuit diagram. This instrument or this experiment of meter bridge actually works on the principle of a balanced Whitstone's network. Now we will start making connections as per circuit diagram and then we will start taking the readings. Right. Uh, so uh, we have now made connections as per circuit diagram. If you have a look at the circuit diagram once again, uh, you find that between wire A and C we have connected a battery, key and a rheostat. In the left gap I have got a known resistance, in the right gap I have got a known resistance and now we will see whether the circuit connections are made accordingly. If you see point A is connected to positive of battery, negative of battery is getting connected to key, key is kept open right now, the next is going to a rheostat base and the variable terminal of rheostat then gets connected to point C. Then in the left hand side or what we call it as left gap I have got unknown resistance X1 connected it is connected between A and B B is the upper middle point so I have I have not connected it here but rather I have connected it at this point B whereas in the right gap I have got a known resistance or a resistance box connected between point B and between point C that is my right gap Galvanometer is connected of course to point B and the next one of galvanometer gets connected to this type of a device which we call it as jockey. So jockey is just a pen like device which is used to which is used to uh, just touch the wire jockey on this wire and to take the readings. Now we'll see, I have put the source on, key is not right now connected and first thing I have to keep in mind is I have to check whether all circuit connections are tight and whether all keys are tightly inserted in this. I have chosen 20 ohms from this resistance box and then I shall insert my key here then touch my jockey once near point A here at this point and try to find where is the deflection in the galvanometer. I find the deflection in the galvanometer goes to the left hand side when I touch it at point A. When I touch it at point C, I find my deflection in the galvanometer goes to right side. So when I touch it at point A, it is on the left hand side. When I touch it at point C, it is on the right hand side. So it is going to give me a both sided deflection and then I can search for where is my null point by touching it somewhere here. I will just keep an eye on the galvanometer and I touch it somewhere here on the wire. It is on the left hand side. As I start moving it, yes, this gives me my null deflection or zero deflection. 
and if you observe my null deflection comes somewhere at 51 cm that 51 cm is from the left end of the wire that is from point a now i have got my unknown resistance x connected here so whatever is the length corresponding to this x1 or this x that will be called as lx the remaining length is going to be 49 cm if you see 51 from the left end so 49 cm from the right end so i have got my lx and lr values are 40 uh, 51 and 49 cm ah so uh, when we took the reading for x1 here i got my lx value as 51 and lr value as 49 cm when the known resistance that was connected that was chosen from the right hand gap was 20 ohms i can similarly choose maybe some different value of resistance from the resistance box and i can repeat the experiment twice or thrice and find what are the values of x1 that you get the average value of x1 will be considered to be the value of x1 now very important thing is that if you want to have correct reading first and very important thing is all the connections have to be tight the keys have to be tightly inserted you must choose proper resistance from resistance box so that the readings are between middle one third of the wire also one must ensure that if you have a smaller experiment we also interchange the gaps that we connect unknown resistance in the right gap and known resistance or resistance box in the left gap once again we perform the experiment and we take average reading so as to have very correct uh, values of unknown resistance now we can perform the similar kind of thing for x2 simply what i need to do is you just have to remove these connections of x1 and i'll get my x2 connected here so i have to connect my x2 here so that now i can take readings for x2 as well this value of unknown resistance x2 is not known to us so i still keep 20 ohms in the right gap if you see i have chosen 20 ohms from this right gap rest all the other keys are inserted tight and proper and i touch my jockey once near point a here at this point and i find what is the deflection in the galvanometer the deflection in the galvanometer is on the left hand side when i touch it at point a whereas if i touch it at point c i find the deflection goes on the right hand side then i start finding where is my null point as i touch my jockey it is somewhere here and i find to my surprise that this value is going beyond 70 cm 71 cm so what i must do here is i find the value corresponding to this resistance box is less for the length so i'll have to choose more resistance maybe i'll choose 20 more ohms from here so 20 and 20 40 ohms has been chosen now and then i start doing the experiment and i find that the reading is somewhere here so i find it's for 51 again uh, once again it has come to 51 and 49 cm uh, that is what i find it is for 40 ohms i can even do this experiment by choosing 10 more ohms say 50 ohms and once again i try to do the same thing and i find that the null deflection is obtained from that the null deflection is obtained at <coughs> 46 and 53 46 acha 45 and 55 cm length so i find because i have increased my value of 
a known resist uh, that known resistance r was increased the value of lr also has correspondingly increased and then we can make connections so similarly you can choose different values for the of the known resistances r from the resistance box do the calculation for x2 by using this formula x upon r is equal to lx upon lr this will give me different values of x2 average value of x2 can also be determined now once x1 and x2 are calculated we can just make one more connection here then i can connect x1 and x2 both connected in series in the left gap i'll just have this connected here x1 and x2 are connected in series and we can perform the experiment similarly for the series combination maybe i'll choose some more value of resistances let us say i'm going to choose 50 and 20 that is 70 cm 70 ohm resistance is chosen from the resistance box and here i find what is my balancing length and i find my balancing length has come around 45.5 cm that is for lx and 54.5 is for lr and i find that the galvanometer is showing me zero deflection here just slightly to the left or to the right as i move it will give me change in the deflection so this is how i can determine the unknown resistance x series as well so once we have calculated all this x1 x2 and x series you can verify that the practically found values of x1 x2 and x series they are obeying the law of series combination that x series is equal to x1 plus x2 in the similar experiment in the same experiment you can also connect x1 and x2 in the parallel combination in the left gap choose some smaller values of resistance from the resistance box and perform the experiment in a similar manner and you can even verify the law of resistance in parallel combination the precautions of the experiment and the possible sources of errors are as what we have stated earlier for calculating x1 x2 or series parallel everything okay thank you you all